And we humble ourselves, we're seeking you, and praying to you, and turning from ourselves that you would be glorified. And as you have taken your kindness to come by here today, we bask in your glory. We bask in this honor today that you have given to us. And as you have your way in this place, we're going to wrestle with you until you refuse to let us leave the same way we came in. Ah, we're going to push this baby until we deliver the product, the praise and worship that you would have in our lives. And we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everybody shouted amen. I know I've got you clapping your hands and praising God, but it's all right. You can't do it enough. Come on and clap those hands again and give God a praise. We welcome you today to Total Life Christian Ministries, where we are in this thing for life, baby. You better know it. Grab that word, if you will. We're so honored to have those of you who may be our guest on today. So honored to have those of you who may be watching as our members today. We just praise God for you. Amen. And we're grateful for you in the house of God today. I want you to take your Bibles and I want you to lift them up and just repeat after me. This is my Bible. I love my Bible. I cherish my Bible. Because I know that this Bible is the word of the living God. Just look at three people, tell them, show no vias. I promise you that. It's the word of God. Let's go to Matthew chapter four. I'm so glad to see y'all today. Y'all look good. You look much better alive than you do. Praise the Lord. Amen. I won't even finish that. <laughs> Somebody this week was close to death, thought they weren't going to be here today. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to just say, thank you, Lord. <laughs> See, some people don't come to play church. They come like they really do enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his course with praise because they know they just got out of hell. They just came out the fire. They, they clothes still smoking. You, you up here playing patty cake and they like, get out my way. If you don't want to bless him, I'll bless him because I know what he's done in my life. I got anybody in here that know that God's been good to you. I mean, do you really know that God's been good to you? Even when you were hard headed, even when you were stiff necked, even when you were doing your own thing, his grace and mercy, I mean, just right there. <laughs> there you look at somebody telling them, I ain't playing today. I'm going deeper. I'm going further. I, I ain't playing with you. I, I did not come to play with you. I got to go deeper. I got to go further than I've been before. Matthew chapter four, if you found it, say amen. I'll do the reading today. I'm going to do quite a bit of reading just so that you get the whole point. Although you've heard this story before, the King James Version, it reads, starting at verse one, then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, isn't that some audacity? If you be the son of God, like he didn't know who he was, you know, but if thou be the son of God, command that these store, stones be made bread. Sometimes you got to know who you are, the enemy not testing you. I'm sorry, I'm trying not to preach already, but I'm just saying Jesus didn't suffer from identity crisis. He when he said, if you be the son of God, he said, turn these stones, be made to bread. But Jesus answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, if thou be the son of God, there he go again, cast thyself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, 
and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest any, at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then Jesus saith unto him, I'm tired of you. Well, that's my translation. I'm sorry. I put myself in there. I, I didn't got tired of you. I've been playing around with you the last two times. But now get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him. And behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Well, how many folk went deeper? How many folk went farther? Well, today I want you to touch three people to tell them, let's go higher. <laughs> <laughs> they used to sing that song every round goes higher and higher since I laid my burden down every round goes higher and higher since I laid my burden down I like some, oh, don't, don't, don't start, don't start, don't start. For those of you that did not know, welcome to Total Life Christian Ministries. I'm telling y'all, these folk will go in on you. All you got to do is get them a bar and they will go and they'll go in on you. You may be seated in the presence of the Almighty. It is amazing. As we talk about life, we have come to the place where we understand that many of us are beyond and desiring beyond the ordinary. We've gotten to the place where ordinary just won't do. We're used to the same old, same old. Used to the probability of mundaneness. Every day, life offers me the same thing. And I think that my life in my day is dictated by what the day gives me. <laughs> but what you should understand is that the day can only give you what it can give you, which is gonna be the same thing. It's gonna give you 24 hours. It's gonna give you the sun rising and the sun setting. It's going to give you the moon rising and the moon setting. Every day, it's going to give you the same thing. And if you allow your life to be lived, predicated by what the day gives to you, then you really aren't living the life that God gave you. You are only living purpose and the fulfillment of the life that God gave you, when you break free of the chains of the mundaneness of life, and you break beyond the barriers and the borders of boredom and complacency and satisfaction and settling, when you break beyond those concepts and you begin to understand that my life is not dictated and is not lived predicated upon what the day gives to me, but what I do with what the day gives to me. The so day is going to give me 24 hours and I don't care how much you play with your clock. You only got 24 hours. <laughs> you can set it 
put it behind the time and think that you're giving yourself an extra hour. And if that works for you, it works for you. You can hit that snooze button all you want. Set your clock earlier. Come on. If you got to be up at 7, you're going to make it the clock a half hour earlier so that you think it's 6.30 and it really ain't 6.30. You could do all of that, but the day is going to give you the same thing. Your life can no longer be predicated upon an experience where you are settling with the day that has been given to you. But when you really grow up in life, when you really mature, you begin to recognize that God has given you a power to do something with every hour in the day that he's given you, with every minute, with every second. And if you don't utilize the power that God has given you to use what time and to use what the day has given you in order to live, then you are not being fulfilled in the life that God created you to live. Because the day is going to continue to give you the same stuff. It's all that it has to offer. All the day has to offer is 24 hours. All the day has to offer you is the stuff you left undone yesterday. All the day has to offer you are the dreams that you desire and yet you don't aspire. All the day has to offer you is the dream you went to sleep with last night and woke up this morning with no inspiration to literally walk in it. The day is going to throw you problems. The day is going to throw you trial. The day is going to throw you challenges. The day is going to throw you tribulation. And if you say, oh my God, woe is me because all I have is what's in front of me and I can't do anything about it. So a man thinks in his heart. So is that man. But I believe that I'm with some folk today that finally got it. Some folk that finally have decided that I don't have to sit here like that. And I don't have to just accept the mundaneness of the day. That I can literally take the time and the experiences that the time is offering to me. And I can use the life that God has given me and the abilities that God has given me, and the talents that God has given me, and I can use those things in order to end up in a better position, in a better place. How many of you know that you are not stuck unless you want to be? Comparison within the day will cause you to believe that you, that everybody else is living their life but you. That everybody else got friends but you. That everybody else is happy but you. That everybody else is joyful but you. That everybody else that don't even love God, don't even go to church, that they got it going on but you. And as long as you stay in that place, you negate your God-given power and authority to live what God has called you to live. And it makes you no better than Adam and Eve who forsook the power that God did. There is nothing about be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion that says you got to accept what the day gives you. Let me say that one more time. There is nothing about the ability and the promise and the power that God gave you through his blessing. The Bible book, Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 28, says that God blessed them and said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion. What about that tells Adam and Eve that they have to accept whatever the day has given them? They said, no, we can do something about it. And I just want you to nudge somebody and tell them, I can do something about it. Now, that decision that you're making to do something about it means that you got to make a commitment. Everybody say commitment. You got to make a commitment. You got to change your mindset. 
That's why the Bible says that you have to be transformed by the renewing of the mind. You cannot be conformed to this world and what the world has to offer and what the day has to give to you, but you have to take whatever is giving you and you have to make a commitment to transform yourself, to live in spite of whatever life has given to you. You've got to use the hurt. You've got to use the pain. You've got to use all the things that's happened. You've got to use the trial. You've got to use the challenge. Because if you don't use it in order to keep on living, then guess what? It will break you. And I'm tired of seeing the people of God broken beyond repair. I'm not talking about the same kind of brokenness that Marilyn taught on last year. She was talking about a spiritual breaking that just reminds you every now and then that you're not God. (laughs) Because sometimes we need that kind of breaking because our arrogance takes over. That's the kind of breaking that Paul went through. He said, I begged God three times in prayer to take the thorn out of my side. God said, no, I'm going to leave you with that thorn because you're doing so well with it. And the only reason you're doing well with it, because as long as you got that thorn, you remember to pray. That thorn remind you to go on fast, even when the church don't call the fast. That thorn will remind you that you're not so almighty, that you're not so high, that you're not perfect. That you're not, You need that thorn in your side every now and then, so that even when you get great revelation with your super deep self, even when you get an, a special anointing, and you're going around healing the sick and raising the dead, God need to remember mind you, you still a man and you still got a thorn in your side. And I just want to throw this in for good measure. I know that we are called to learn to live sin free. And yes, we need to exercise and practice that. But I want you to know that all of that is still left up to the grace and mercy of God. Let me say what it is that I mean. Yes, you wrestle against sin in yourself. But let me tell you that you're going to die with some sin still in you. Because you're not saved because you are sinless. You are saved by grace. (laughs) You're saved because God knows that you already jacked up. And there really is nothing to do except to put the blood of Jesus over it. And those of us that believe that the Lord was was killed and murdered and hanged on the cross and went down into hell and then after three days was resurrected from the dead and now claims all power in heaven and earth in his hand. When we believe that and accept it, it means that there is some cover up that's going on. Because it's some stuff. It's some stuff. It's some stuff. Look, it's some stuff going on with you that you don't even know going on with you. <laughs> it's some it's some iniquity. See, this ain't the sin that you can see. See, you used to dealing with the sin that you can see, and that's the stuff. But it's some stuff that's going on in you called iniquity that you don't even know. It's the iniquity that's driving the sin. Paul, oh, that iniquity is what had Paul say, wretched man that I am. Like, I'm, <laughs> every time I desire to do good, evil is always present. He says some stuff in me that I don't even know about. If I knew about it, I would have never said that I would do good in that area. But I said I was going to do good in that area because I didn't think it was no sin there. I didn't think it was no flaw there. And then when I started doing good, I found out, oh, my goodness, there goes some iniquity. Oh, my goodness, I didn't even know I was weak there. Oh, my goodness, I didn't even know that was going to hurt. Oh, my goodness. I need all come talking to somebody, somebody in here that now you have started cowering back in your walk of faith because you think and you let somebody else tell you, and you supposed to be a Christian. You tell them, and so are you. Just because I'm a Christian doesn't mean that I'm gonna work it all out. Thank God that I got Jesus and his blood in my life because there's some stuff going on with me that I can't work out. My mama and daddy worked it in, and I can't work it out. My granddaddy and my grandmama worked it in, and I can't work it out. I don't even know it's there, but thanks be to God. Oh, somebody need to slap somebody and tell them, but thanks be to God. 
I know I'm not everything that I want to be. I know I'm not everything that he called me to be. I know that I'm not everything that I can be. But I thank God that I'm not what I used to be. At least there's some change, some transformation going on in my life. But you have to make an intentional decision, some intentional commitments if you're going to break over that and, and that decision is you have to make decision the first one we talked about you have to make a decision and a commitment to go deeper there is a, a deeper you inside of you there is a there is a deeper calling deep calls unto deep there there's some deep stuff going on that if, if you would just settle down and and dig deeper and and go lower then and go beneath the surface of life you'll find that god has planted a richness in you that god has given you a spirit uh, that it is not of fear it is not a, of, of those things it is a power and of love and of a sound mind that's what's deep inside of you don't let the enemy convince you and don't let anybody else influence you and tell you that it ain't nothing going on on the inside of you well your flesh is all messed up because the bible said all flesh is messed up that's right but god don't glory in the flesh but he glories in the treasure he, that he put in and the bible says that there is a deep treasure that he hid on the deep inside part of us that's what god, guess what that's what the devil is after. The devil ain't after your flesh. The devil is after the deep treasure of power and of love and a sound mind that God is, oh my, y'all not understanding what I'm saying. That's what he's after. The devil wants you to lose your mind. He don't care nothing about your flesh. The devil wants you to go crazy. He ain't nerd about your flesh. He don't care what you do with your body and who you go to sleep with. No, he concerned because he know he gonna drive you out your mind. He trying to get to the power. He know that once you lose your mind, you lose your love. That's why he messed with your relationship. That's why he messed with your connection. And if you lose your mind and you lose your love, then you lose your power. Now you're walking around, head all down, don't know where to go, don't know what to do. God said, I did not give you that spirit of fear. I put inside of each and every one of you a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Somebody shout, go deeper. Oh, I dare you talk to people to tell them that it's in there somewhere. That treasure is in there somewhere. That treasure is in there somewhere. Can I throw this in for free? Some of y'all so sick and tired of TLC because we be in your business and we be in, yeah, and we're going to stay there because we are, our job is to get to that treasure. Our job is to get you to focus on that treasure. I know you don't like that I keep turning you around. I know you don't like that I keep making you look in yourself. I know you don't like it because I keep encouraging you. You trying to be depressed. You trying to be funky. You trying to act nasty. You trying to keep that bad attitude because you believe that that's all you deserve. But the devil is a liar. I am the apostle of this ministry. And God told me, find your treasure and tell you, look for your treasure. You got power on the inside of you. You got love on the inside of you. You got a sign on the inside of you. I dare you to have three people that tell them it's in there somewhere. Oh, it's in there somewhere. It's in there somewhere. It's in there somewhere. It's in there somewhere. I don't even know why I'm here, but I'm here to tell somebody. That's why the enemy wants you to, to concentrate on yourself. And he wants you to concentrate on your pain. And he wants you to concentrate on what you're going through. And he wants you to concentrate on your depression. And he wants you to concentrate on what you don't have. And he wants you to concentrate on what you lost. And he wants you to concentrate on how you feel. And he wants you to concentrate on your attitude. He wants you to concentrate on how lonely you are. He wants you to concentrate on you ain't got nobody. He wants you to concentrate on what you're don't have. He wants you to concentrate on the friends that walked away. He wants you to concentrate on trying to get along with everybody. He wants you to concentrate on all of that so that you will never concentrate on the power and the love and the sound mind. Because baby, if you ever start concentrating on the treasure that God gave you, there is nothing in this day that you cannot handle. There is nothing in this day that you cannot break past. There is nothing in this day that can hold 
on you down. You'll look at every challenge and say, I got power. You'll look at every relationship and say, I got love. You'll look at everything and say, I got a sound mind. I can think my way out of this. I can logic my way out of this. I can feel my way out of this. Somebody jump up and shout, it's in here somewhere. It's this. But if you're gonna find it, you gotta go deeper. You gotta be willing to go beneath the surface. You gotta be willing to go beneath the surface. Well, y'all know how I am. I always act like that. If you're gonna tap into the treasure of the spirit that God gave you, you're gonna have to go deeper. You're gonna have to go beneath the way you always act. You're going to have to go beneath the way. <laughs> You're going to have to go deeper than that so that you can find out why you always act like that. So that you can change it. Because the way that you always act is not benefiting you anymore. The way that you always respond is not getting you where you want to go. That's why even though in a few minutes you feel like you're having fun, but as soon as the thing is over, you ain't having fun no more. Because there's something deeper than that that you have not satisfied. It's the power and the love, and the sound mind. But you only get it when you're willing to go deeper, when you're willing to go beneath that. Let me get under that. You, you, can't, you can't fix the car until you get under the hood. You got to go, you got to go beneath that thing. You, you got to learn how to get under stuff. You got to learn how to get through it so that you can get beneath it. So, so I, I need to get, I need to go lower. I need to go lower. I need to go lower. There used to be a song that said, the more you talk, I'm going to stay on my knees. It's a, they said that, that, that no matter what's going on, see, my way of going up is going down. I know how to go down, baby. I know how to get down. I know how to get down. Y'all didn't hear what I said. I know how to get down. I know it's a 1970s term, but I'm bringing it back to life right now. I know how to get down, baby. I can get down with the best of them. Oh, I believe that it was Michelle Obama that said, when they go high, I go low. You got to know how to get down sometimes. When they go low, I go, oh, y'all know what I'm saying. You got to learn how to go lower. But then even when you go deeper, you also got to know how to go farther. And you've got to make a commitment because life is going to give you the same thing. But you got to learn sometimes you need to get beneath it and go deeper. But sometimes you need to go past it and go further. You need to go past whatever happened. You need to go past whatever took place. You need to go past whatever went down. You need to go past it. Some of your lives are, are in the space where they are and they stuck where it is because you haven't learned how to go past stuff. You're like the elephant that, that has been tied with a little bitty dental floss and he was tied and every time he stopped and then even when they let him off, he still never went any further than the borders because he thought in his mind he was trapped. Big old elephant, one of the largest land mammals on the planet. And here it is, he's stuck, not that he's chained on his leg, but he's chained in his mind, chained in his heart. And the only way to break that is you have to realize and come to a commitment level where you say, you know what, I'm going farther. I'm going farther than y'all keep telling me that I'm just like my daddy. I'm just like my mama. Uh, no, no, they went through all that they went through so that I could be a little bit better than them. I wish I had a witness in here. We're going to let them go through all the stuff that they went through so we could be just like them? No. My mama sacrificed so I could do a little bit better than her. My daddy sacrificed so I could do a little bit better than him. Woe be unto the parents. Some of y'all parents, y'all don't understand it because you're in competition with your children. You want to be cuter than them. You want to be prettier than them. You want to be stronger than them. You want to steal all their boyfriends and you want to stay young. And I, I just said something. I'm sorry, but I'm speak the truth anyway. You in competition with them. That's why your kids can't stand you. That's why they don't like you because you're in competition with them. They buy shirt, short, shirts, a, a short skirt. You try to buy your shorter. They, you, they, they trying to show off instead of you telling them you ain't got to show off your body, baby, to get love in this world. God 
gave you the power of love, y'all. You up here trying to compete with them. Get your hair done better than theirs. Get your stuff done. All the men trying to wrestle with their sons and want to wrestle with them hard so you can show them and prove to them that you're a bigger man than they are. Of course you are. It's a boy that you're wrestling. Why don't you try wrestling with God? Why don't you try competing with yourself? Why don't you try wrestling with you? You are your hardest opponent. You are your hardest competition. Why don't you wake up every morning and say, today, I'm going to be a little bit better than I was on yesterday and watch and see how hard that is. But we're supposed to be able to go farther. Everybody say, I want to go farther. Ah, uh, that means you might have to look at some people and say, I'm past that. Because <laughs> people have a tendency when they're stuck, they want you to stay there. People want you to stay and they stuck. I wish I had a witness. <laughs> People want you to stay and they stuck. And if you're not wise, you'll end up doing it because you because you think that's the place to be. People will decorate they stuck and make you think that they and your, your stay is comfortable. They'll make you comfortable and they stuck. You'll be there and next thing you know, you stuck right along with them. And one day you're going to wake up and realize you're not at the stay hotel. You're at the stuck motel. You try, you can't get out of here. Ain't no, how do I get out of here? You ever been in that before where you just in stuck motel? All of a sudden, you went over there to encourage them. Now you find yourself depressed. You don't even know what you depressed about. Out. They the one lost their job. You still got yours. They the one can't pay their rent. You just paid your rent in that van. Why are you depressed? Why are you stuck? It's because you made company with misery who has decided that they're going to stay there. But I got some folk today that have made a commitment that I am not living in stuck motel. I'm going to stay hotel where I can go from one place to another and I can leave when I get ready. Do I have anybody in here that's ready to go far in your life? Got to go further. 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 You got to go further. I don't know who I'm talking to today. You got to go further. You cannot allow life to make you feel like you need to settle where you are. You cannot allow life to make you feel like you got to be stuck where you are, that you got to stay where you are. The devil is a lie. That's what he wants. But you got to go past it. The Bible says, once I have uh, left those things behind, I press on. Like you got to learn how to press onward. I, I, I'm, I'm going to preach about that later, but I just need you to understand that you got to make a commitment that I'm going further than here. And you know what? Here may be a good spot, but every day you wake up, you still got to realize that if I'm here, then that's got to be further to go. If I'm here, see some of y'all looking for the promised land on this planet. Promised land ain't on this planet. We don't get to the promised land until we get to the Lord in heaven. Right now, there's always a further. If you woke up today, there's a further to go. If, if you if you here today, there's a further to go. If you got the activity of your limbs, there's a further to go. You still got your job, there's a further to go. Your kid's still alive, there's a further to go. You still in good health, there's a further to go. I'm glad you got some money in your pocket, but there's a further to go. I'm glad you got a good job, but there's a further to go. I'm glad you live in a good neighborhood, but there's a further to go. If you don't have the kind of commitment to deeper and further, then your life will be mundane. And I don't know how many more times I can repeat that these days, the number one enemy to the believers is boredom. We get bored quickly. And when we get bored quickly, my mom used to say that an idle mind, the devil's work. Oh, y'all heard that before. Yeah. It's when you get bored. And so what you have to do is you, you have to always have a goal in front of you. You have to always have another place you're reaching for in front of you. You have to have an inspiration in your heart to go farther and to go deeper than where you are. Because once you wake up, if you don't have that desire, if you don't have an inspiration, then you'll get bored. And then you start trying to make up stuff that ain't nowhere in your plan. You start dating people that you really don't even like. Mm. 
You start connecting with people that you really don't even care for. And, and, and then when they start going down, you'd be looking at them like, I don't need you ugly. Like you for real. Like I ain't even, you was always missing your two front teeth all the time. This whole time. I'm sorry, ma'am. You was bald head all this time. Like that was. I never noticed that before. I, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. What's happening is Mama Garner not here to stop me today. So y'all going to have to, y'all going to have to filter in. Y'all got to play Mama Garner role. But you, you, you ever looked at persons and like, I don't even, I really don't know how I got here. Some of y'all can't raise your hand. And I know, I get it. <laughs> I'm, saying, I'm just saying that there's the times, you know, people look different when they leave the club. They look I realize that's why they serve all them drinks and keep them clubs dark. Cause so y'all don't, y'all can't see. <laughs> you get home and the light come on. No, you be like, oh, oh, hey, 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 man, boy, y'all right. <laughs> because we're because we're bored. Just got into stuff because we bored. God is saying, you need to kill boredom. And the only way to kill boredom is you got to make commitment to inspire to go further and inspire to go deeper. When we go deeper, we're going beneath. When we go further, we're going past. But now I need to talk to you about another direction. I need to talk to you about going higher. Everybody say, let's go higher. When we're talking about going higher, we're not talking about going beneath, and we're not talking about going past. We're actually talking about going beyond, going over. And that's important. Making a commitment to go higher is just as essential as making a decision and a commitment to go deeper and to go farther. And the thing about the believers is that we have to go in these three distinct directions simultaneously, consistently. One day, life will call you to go deeper. And just about the time that you feel like you're breaking ground, the next day will call you to go farther. Just about the time you feel like you went past some stuff. The next day will cause you to have to go higher. To go over your expectations. To go over and beyond your limits. You have to make a commitment to that. Now, I want to point out some things because I know it's strange. If I'm talking about going higher, why would I choose this story? Because see, most of the time we think about going higher. We think that higher is the place. No, I want to get you something. High is the place. Higher is the process you got to go through to get to the place. Many of us want to be high. Oh, well, let me change because I, I don't know. Somebody, I just triggered somebody. I'm sorry. I didn't, I ain't mean like puff, puff, pass high. I ain't mean like that. Popping pills high. If you, I got to say this stuff. You, you used to not have to put in these disclaimers. You know what I'm saying? But now you have to put this stuff in. I'm saying to get to the high place and not that high place either. Because many of you, y'all just be listening to anything saying, Please. Y'all be so happy, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not trying to get to that high place. Because if you finish that particular stanza of that song, the next line says, I will bring down. <laughs> the high place was never good because it was a place that man built in order to try to be God. 
<laughs> Let me come back to text. When you make a commitment to go higher, you must understand that there is a process. And wherever there is a process, there is a challenge. So I read this particular scripture. God gave it to me to share with you about let's go higher. See, y'all not shouting now. When I said, let's go higher, everybody, let's go higher. But see, you thought God was going to pick you up and turn you around and place your feet on solid higher ground. No, that, ain't how, that is not how this works. That's not how this works. You don't have to understand that you are making a, a commitment when you say that I'm going higher. You're making a commitment to go through whatever challenges and whatever is there in the way in order to get to the height of life that God will call you to live. So in this particular story, Jesus has been led to the wilderness to be tempted. Wait. And the Spirit of God led him there to be tempted. The devil didn't lead him there. His flesh didn't lead him there. His sin didn't lead him there. God somewhere thought it was a good idea to lead the Son of God dropped off in the wilderness with the purpose of being tempted by Satan. He thought it was a good idea. Why would God think that this is a good idea? Well, because if I'm going to give you the things that are in the high spaces, I got to know that you can handle it by overcoming, I mean, when Christ comes up out the grave, he says, now behold, I have all power in heaven and earth in my hands. That's what he says, right? I'm the Lord over it all. But why should the father trust him with having all power in heaven and earth in his hand if he couldn't show that he wouldn't be moved and be indifferent and become arrogant with all power in heaven and earth. See, some of y'all want to go higher without proving <laughs> that you can overcome the temptation to become arrogant or proud or do what you want to do you forget that you are a steward. So God decided that in order to have you go higher, I need to make sure that the enemy is there so that you can prove that you're ready to go higher. <laughs> You need to prove that you're ready to go higher. I didn't say you need to prove that you saved. You can't prove that you saved because your salvation has nothing to do with anything that you can prove. Can I teach? Has nothing to do with anything you prove. You stop smoking. I'm glad you stopped smoking. But you didn't stop smoking so you could be saved. You stopped smoking because when you got saved, you realized that smoking kept you from going higher. <laughs> if you're looking at it the other way around, then your salvation is not secure. Because if you put your salvation in anything that is an act to be performed or a thing to be done by you, then Ephesians 2 says you really aren't. By faith are we saved. 
through grace. It is not of ourselves, but it is a gift of God. And then the apostle turns around and tells us why it's got to be a gift of God. Because you would boast if it was of you. If you could say yourself, you'd be bragging all over, look what I did. And so God wants you to be reminded, no, ain't nothing about you that's got this done. If, I, if you don't believe that I'm going to save you, then you're not saved. If you're going to put it in a work or an action. But once we are saved in him, we grow to love him so much and we grow to understand, guess what? There's a higher life that I'm being called to. And I can't go higher in that life if I'm still doing the things that got me stuck in the first place. That's when you begin to work out your soul salvation with fear and trembling. Was that too deep? Was that okay? So understand that higher is a process. You have to, you, you won't own your growth until you recognize that it's growth for you. You're not growing for God. God already has given you everything that pertains to both life and godliness. That was given to you when you were broke. It was given to you, the Bible says, while I was yet a sinner, Christ died for who? The ungodly. Like, you were ungodly when he saved you. So you don't stop doing these things or wrestle against these things to prove something to God. You do it because you are saying, I'm ready to go higher. Zion is calling me to a higher place of praise. A standard is being lifted. And I recognize that there is a higher me over there than it is right here. See, we go through evolution. It is not the evolution that science teaches. I'm 51 years old, and the monkey that I went to go see is still a monkey. I'm just... <laughs> the ape is still an ape. Dog is still a dog. <laughs> All of that is what it is. No, my evolution is in spirituality. My evolution is recognizing the inner self, the deep self that God has created and the power that he's put on the inside of me, the me that he created me to be that somewhere my sin and my loftiness caused me to walk away from that and create this life that I'm living now that's a pseudo life, which is the reason why I'm not happy and I'm not pleased, I'm not satisfied because this life that I'm living that I made myself cannot satisfy the things that God has created for the life that he called me and created me to live. So now I got to get rid of the pseudo life and I got to learn day by day. I got to high, higher and higher and higher and higher. And that is the path that we're on. Don't let anybody convince you or tell you that once you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that he was risen from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Don't let them tell you that you got to do all these strange actions and strange things and strange things. You know, it, it, um, there is not in the Bible. The Bible is your source. It's not in the Bible. There is no way you can acknowledge God <laughs> And be living for the devil. Y'all. I want to make sure I say this right. So that you understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying. That you can't. Be claimed by God. Or be saved by God. And not have to wrestle through some things. In your life. Again. That's about you growing. But you can't be in God. A loving father is going to save you and then let you be possessed? I'm just, I just want you to, just want you to think about it. Don't get mad. Just think about it. Jesus told a parable, said, if a son asks his father for a piece of bread, will his father give him a stone or a snake? 
No, he's going to give them a piece of bread. He said, now, don't you know that if men can treat their sons and give them good gifts, don't you know your heavenly father, <laughs> who is not a man, <laughs> he is already giving you. He, it's like it's already there. But sometimes we get held and we get broken. And it's not a fault of anything or anybody, but it's time to go higher and realize that that, that growth, I can be saved by God and still have some challenges to go through, but that's just me going higher. That's why I like those old songs. Please be patient with me. God is not through it. God is already patient with me because he know the exact day and time. He know how much stuff I'm going to get rid of. He know how much stuff I'm going to overcome. And he know the stuff I'm not going to overcome. He's already given the blood for that. But I need sometimes people to be patient with me because I know I'm not where you want me to be and where you think I should be by now. But at least I'm growing. And I'm not growing by your timetable. I'm not growing by your clock. I'm not growing by your watch. I'm growing based on the plan that God has laid out for my life. I got to follow his steps that he's already orchestrated and ordered. I got to do that for me. And that's why the rounds are going higher. And sometimes it's easy for me to get to that next step. But sometimes it's hard for me to get to that next step. So please be patient. Don't just run by me and then turn around and laugh at me. Don't just try to push me over out the way. Please, if you can't help me, please don't stop me. I just want to move out of my way. Don't try to block me. I mean, I'm, I'm not, Don't you ain't got to judge me. I didn't already judge myself. You ain't got to talk about me. I didn't already talk about myself. You ain't got to put me down. I didn't already put myself down. It was God that when I put myself down, he picked me up and dusted me off and said, that's not what I created you for. You are now ready to go higher. How many folk are ready to go higher? The spirit of God, I got to go a little further. Got to go a little deeper. Got to go a little higher. Spirit of God takes Jesus and leads him to the wilderness to be tempted. Now, this is where we fail. The Bible does not say that the spirit told Jesus why he was taking him to the wilderness. We assume because Jesus is Lord that perhaps he knew. But I'm just saying to you, the Bible does not say that Jesus knew why the Holy Spirit was taking him to the wilderness. Is that safe to say? Only reason that I'm putting that there is because sometimes you miss going higher because you need to know why he's taking you places. I got to get out of here because... <laughs> I can't, every time I get out, I keep, y'all keep pulling me back in. And says, so, well, Lord, where are we going? Well, why we got to go over there? But it ain't nothing over there but the wilderness. Ain't even no people over there. <laughs> so you expect me to be by myself? So when I'm going to eat? Where the water at? So I'm just supposed to be over here and do what? Why I got to go through this? Y'all laughing because I sound just like us. There needs to be a trust that you place in God to know that he know why he's taking you where he's taking you and dropping you off. He knows that that space that he's dropping you off, he knows two things. Number one, he knows that's the space you need to be in order to go higher. And if that one don't make you shout, this one should. He know that if he drop you off, you could get through it. You can go higher. That's, that's the one that's me. He's not going to drop you off somewhere that he know you can't handle. If you're going through something or you're in a space that you don't think you can handle, then God didn't put you there. Um, I, I could just wrap it up, right? I could, 
Y'all should be falling in the floor right Because y'all y'all like to make excuses and then make excuses for God. Well, I must be going through this because this must be what God want me to go through. No, the promises of God are yeah and amen. If you somewhere where you got to struggle and fight and argue and push people around and get dogged out and all of that, you know, get, God didn't put you there. That's why I'm not concerned about that. If I got to fight that hard for it, then it ain't my blessing. If I got to go through all of that to get it, then God ain't got it for me. Because what God's got for me, it is for me. I ain't got to fight for it. I ain't got to struggle about it. I ain't got to go through it. All I got to do is keep going higher and then I'll get it. I'm so tired of doing these funerals and, and people out there and they put the person in the casket and then they read in the obituary. The Lord must have taken him home because he just wanted him to have a new angel so he could give him his wings. And I'm like, did you put in the obituary that he killed 17 people um, uh, and, and didn't go to church and, and <laughs> didn't even believe in God, that he never prayed? His, his grandmama, he wore his grandmama out because she's going to church praying for him. He was rebellious at heart. No, God didn't kill him murder found him because he was living outside of his created being that's a tough one to man because some of y'all y'all be saying that little cute stuff for this that or other and i'd be like okay if you say so but if god wanted an angel he would create an angel there's nowhere in the bible that suggests that when you die you become an angel I'm just saying, it ain't in there. I, I done read the whole Bible a few times. I know, no, angels are angels. <laughs> They're two separate, two separate beings. That, that's not what the word of God said. We got to get back to the word of God on some stuff. I'm just saying. Jesus didn't have to know, but he was confident enough in himself to know that wherever the spirit dropped him off, he could handle it. And that's the same kind of confidence that we've got to gather. That wherever the spirit comes up, whatever the day gives us, whatever the day brings us, wherever we find ourselves, it don't matter who took us there. If God brought us there, then we got enough to handle it. If God took us there, then he's going to bring us through it. If God, that way, we got enough. And look, and, and the Holy Spirit did not lead Jesus by the hand. He said, nope, you got enough in you to overcome this yourself. You got enough in you to come over this yourself. You got enough in you to go higher yourself. You don't need a prophet. You don't need an apostle. You know, all you need is to believe. Believe the little words you got in you, and it'll take you higher. If you could, oh my God, you think you got to memorize the whole Bible. If you just learn how to believe the few scriptures that you didn't memorize, then you can grow. I'm here to tell you. You can go higher. God's already made that way. Look at your neighbor say, let's go higher. And let me show you that Jesus proved that he was ready for anything. Because when Holy Spirit dropped him off in the wilderness, he didn't just sit there twiddling his thumbs. The Bible says he went on his own fast. Oh, 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 oh. Wait a minute. The father didn't tell him to fast. The Holy Spirit didn't say, you know what? I'm about to drop you off in the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. You better spend this time fasting before you get here. He didn't say none of that stuff. He got there and he realized, I don't know exactly what's going on, but I need to be talking to the Father while I'm here. While I'm waiting, I need to be gathering strength. While I'm waiting, I need to be gathering joy. While I'm waiting, I need to be praising. While I'm waiting, I need to be worshiping. While I'm waiting, I need to be praying. See, that's your problem. God trying to take you higher. He didn't led you to a place and and instead of you doing what you need to do to get closer to him and prepare yourself for what's about to come, you too busy complaining about where he dropped you off and what you're going to do. You too busy being bored because you thought that this was a place where you were supposed to be excited and fed grapes by hand. The devil is a lie. The angels don't come into this passage of scripture until after Jesus goes higher. Because you thought going higher was going to make everything easier. <laughs> but no, Jesus said, I don't know exactly what's getting ready to go on. But I tell you what, while I'm sitting here, hey, daddy, what you doing today? 
Daddy, you ain't even got to tell me what's going on. Just tell me what I need, you know, to be what, what I need, what strength I need, what do I need joy? Do I need to be happy about? I just got baptized, so I am kind of happy about that. I don't understand why it would bring me here, drop me out, but I'm telling you, make me ready. Make me ready for whatever's coming. Make me ready and prepared. Make me prepared for whatever's getting ready to happen. I don't have to know it. All I got to do is be ready for it. If I live in a state of readiness, in a state of preparation, then nothing will shock me. Nothing will surprise me. Nothing will get over on me. Nothing can sneak up on me. That's how I want to live my life. I want to live my life so spiritually discerning that I'm ready for whatever it is that comes. He ain't got to tell me what time I'm going to die and what day I'm going to die. I just want to take today that I'm alive and live so that I'm ready whenever death comes. You got to get prepared. Why you? Look at your neighbor say, don't waste time. If the enemy ain't messing with you yet, you need to be getting stronger. <laughs> if the enemy ain't messing with you right now, you need to be growing in the word. <laughs> if the enemy ain't, if, if you if you got a good money right now and things are kind of looking up for you right now, this ain't the time you'd be running around partying and all excited. You need to be increasing your praise and increasing your worship and increasing your time with God. Lord, because I don't know if I'm going to have time to do this tomorrow. Because see, when I start going up, I may not have the same amount of time to worship. When I start going up, I may not have the same kind of energy to praise. But while I got the energy and while I got the time and while I got the day and while I got the moment, let me seize it for you because it's your day. It's your time. It's your moment. It's your season. I know you gave it to me, but I have learned in my life that whatever you give me, God, if I give it back to you, it'll grow. It'll increase. It'll get better. So I'm giving it back to you because I want to be ready for whatever comes. Matthew 4 says that when Jesus was done fasting, Satan came to where he was. Now remember, he was in the wilderness first. Now the wilderness is a little bit higher than the playing grounds. So he has to go up to meet Jesus where he is. And when he gets there, he knows Jesus is hungry. Well, Satan is not omniscient like God. He doesn't know everything. So how, pray tell, did he know that Jesus was hungry? He must have been following him. <laughs> Jesus was fasting, and his fasting didn't cause the devil to stop following him. Jesus had the kind of discernment where I'm sure he picked up on, oh, there's another entity here other than myself. But he just let him follow him because he wasn't focused on who's following me. Who behind me? Get thee behind me, Satan. He, you know, he said, no, I'm fasting right now. I'm so focused on what I'm doing for God that I ain't got time to be focused on who following me. I'm so busy worshiping and praising God and fasting to him and get myself prepared that I, I, I don't want to be distracted by what's going on around me or behind me. I'm focused on this. And then after the last day of that fast, Satan came to him. Now, look at this. This is a matter of going up. Jesus is here in the wilderness. Satan comes to him. And the first level of going up is he tests Jesus in the area of the things that he needs. Because if we're going to go up, you got to deal with your humanity. Ooh, starting to sound like some stuff y'all know. Humanity. Relationship. Oh man. It, yeah. If if you're gonna go up, you gotta start dealing with you. Some of y'all so spiritually minded that you're confusing the people that don't know God. Because they trying to figure out <laughs> how you prophesying to them about what they need to do. 
but you bypassed your kids that they hang out with, that they smoke drugs with, that they get drunk with, that they party with. Y'all, okay, y'all already looking at me funny. Do I need to preach the white Jesus for me? I get to, okay. We have to get to a place where we understand that that's all of the God that they can see in us. And that that's the first place where we got to come up. He says, I know you're hungry. I want you to take something out of his creative purpose and turn it into what you need for your own physical well-being. I want you to take the stone and turn it into bread. I know you could do it. And Jesus said, mm, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It's funny, he said, man shall not live alone. It's not referring to him, because then he says, but shall live, proceed, uh, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He's like, I'm, I'm the son of God. I can live on the words that I have because the words that I have are life. That first step, we got to learn how to overcome and how to manage the things of our physical world, things that are part of our humanity, because it's the place where the enemy can distract us and cause us to not go higher. We want to praise God, but physically we're not able because we don't take care of our bodies because we think it's our body. We don't recognize that God lent us this body. He lent us this body to glorify him. Now you can take what God has lent you to be a good steward over and you can do whatever you want with it. But then we end up paying the price. And it's not so much about being hell bound as it is about being stuck from going higher. Now God's calling you to a position where he wants you to show the world that he's alive and he wants you to go on a, on a three week fast and just minister to this group of people. But you can't do it because physically you've not taken care of the things that are here. I'm talking to you very practically right now. You've got to master I'm not talking about flesh as sin. I'm just talking about your body. It's important. How you sleep, how you exercise. It's important. Your physical strength, your level of endurance. It's important what you eat. The day is over for us waiting until the doctor tells us that he sees something wrong with us. We can't wait for that. We're not living our best lives if we do. We've got to take control of it now while God has given us the opportunity to do it. And I'm not saying it to make you feel bad. I'm telling you that this was the first place and the first temptation. Because all the Bible says is that when we're tempted, know that God has not tempted us and he never will. The Bible does not say that God won't allow Satan to tempt us. As a matter of fact, the book of James says, really, temptation don't even belong to the devil. <laughs> he says, man is tempted when he is drawn away by his son. Y'all been blaming that on the devil all this time. So what did the devil do from there? When Jesus passed this level, the Bible says, then Satan led him up. He took him higher. And he stood him on top of a high built sanctuary. And they stood there on the roof together and Satan said to him, look, go ahead and jump down. And then when all the people see you falling, and see those angels rushing to come and pick you up, then they'll believe. And Jesus said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord 
by God. You know who you're talking to. Stop saying, if I be the son of God, you know who I am. Don't tempt me. Now watch this. Satan has taken him higher. And on this plane, after he's learned how to deal with the physical aspects of the physical world, now Satan is trying to tempt him with gaining attention of people. But see, that's another place we got to we got to master that. It's a distraction when we're going through life. But we want everybody to know what we're going through. I want everybody to pay attention to us. I want everybody to be concerned about us. I want everybody to see that we're good people. And we want everybody to know that we really are saved. And we want everybody to pay attention to what's going on with us. And it's a place that can knock you off the mark. You could get stuck in that. So Holy Spirit allows Satan, when he takes him up higher, he says, one of the things you're going to go through is you got to resist the temptation of wanting to get everybody to pay attention to you, wanting to get everybody to like you, wanting to get everybody to notice you. Like you, you got to do something with that, because if you don't, then you'll never, you'll never amass to the fulfillment of what God created your life to be. And it's interesting because when he got to this level, he took him to the church. <laughs> Could it be because it's important that you master the relationships that you have with your brothers and sisters? And could it be that they're the ones who are more inclined to pay attention to you doing something great, but not pay attention to you when you're not? People in church, if they see you falling and they see God catch you, then they say you must be saved. But if they see you falling and God don't catch you, then they say, uh-oh, better stop messing with them. They not saved. Doesn't mean that you're not saved because you hit the ground. Your proof that God is with you is to not even be tempted by people paying attention. Let them look. Let them gaze. Let them stare. Tell them, take a picture. It'll last longer. Because in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, <laughs> you don't know. I tell people all the time, if you call that funny acting, I don't call it funny acting. I call it being transformed. I'm just, every day I'm transforming. You can't catch me from minute to minute thinking the same thing. I might tell you something right now and then think about it and the Holy Spirit come and say, no, that ain't the way it is. And then you come back to me and be like, you know what? I was wrong about that. That ain't what we need to do. We need to do this right here because I just prayed about it. I should have prayed about it before I told you that, but I didn't and I just prayed about it now. Now, if you're the type of person that get frustrated with people who are transforming before your very eyes, then you might not want to hang out with me because I transform. I'm telling you, I'm a transformer. <laughs> it's what I do. All of this is happening while he's going higher. Then Satan says, okay, this isn't good enough. The Bible says he took him higher. This time he took him to the highest point. And he said to him, Look down. All the kingdoms I'll give you if you'll just serve me. And Jesus said, get behind me. Get, get away from me. Me serve you? Me bow to you? I created you. <laughs> me bow to you? But why is this important? Because you also have to learn how to resist the essence of power. You can't be a person that power changes you and authority changes you and strength changes you. And now, because you no longer live on this street, 
But now you've got a big house on this street because you're an executive now. You can't turn your nose down on the people you used to live on their same street. See, and where I come from, people like that, they love to get you told. They love to embarrass you. They love to pull you out there. They'll walk right up into your church where you're the great minister, executive and all of that, and be like, uh-uh, they grew up with me. Oh, she a minister? Look at her. You know, you talk about her right there. Let me tell you about her. The pastor must not know. Pastor must not know about her. Somebody need to go and tell the pastor. We ain't gossiping. This the spirit want us to let him know that they you did because he just don't know. <laughs> you have to resist. You know why? Because Jesus is about to become the most famous being ever. If he is going to bow down for power that he already got. <laughs> then he is not ready. He's not fit to be the sacrifice. He's not fit to go higher. So we have to learn also to resist the temptation to use authority and use power to look down on people. Otherwise, God will say, nope, you're not ready and you can't go any higher than this. And I got to keep you right here until you learn that silver and gold ain't worth it and, and positioning ain't worth it. It's not, nothing is worth you losing your soul. Nothing is worth you breaking all of the other tests that you just passed in order to get here. Now you got power. What are you going to use it for? All the power that you're going to gain when you come through this is really my glory. God says you need to learn that going higher and then I'm here going higher is a training that you don't want to skip you don't want to skip it because if you skip it you'll be stuck in the wilderness you don't want to skip it. That's why some of you are, are unsatisfied now. You're going to church a lot of years, but you still don't feel fulfilled. You know why? Because you've been going to church for 25 years, but you're still in the wilderness. It's not a matter that you're not growing. I mean, I didn't done everything in the church. I didn't, I didn't clean the bathrooms. I, <laughs> I, I didn't been a minister. I was a deacon. I taught the children's ministry. I didn't did. A, I was on the praise team. I sang in the choir. I didn't, <laughs> I done, I done, because you thought it was elevation based on your serving. No, we're all servants. Servant is a high level. Because a servant has to be entrusted with the power of God to serve. Y'all will get that tomorrow. No, what we're talking about is that going higher and understanding that there's a commitment that says, I'm ready to go through whatever I got to go through to go past and beyond it. I know that this is worth it. And how do we know that it was worth him going higher? Because once he did the last thing, once he overcame the last height, guess what happened? The Bible says, this is how you get the devil to leave you alone. <laughs> you don't get the devil to leave you alone in the wilderness. You don't get the devil to leave you alone at church. Ooh. You don't get the devil to leave you alone until you overcome the, the mountains and the high place. Once that happened, the Bible says, and Satan left him. You've been fighting Satan on plain ground. That's why you can't go nowhere. No, if you really want him to leave you alone, you got to make a commitment to go higher than where you are right now.
You got to make a commitment to go higher in your word, to go higher in your prayer, to go higher in your praise, to go higher in your fasting, to go higher in your fellowship, to go higher in your stewardship, to go higher in your servantry, to go higher in your ministry, to go higher with your gifts, to go higher with your fruit. Whatever expectation that you put on yourself, God said, no, you got to go higher than that if you want the devil to leave you alone. And I don't know about you, but that would be a great feat in my life. If I could get that rascal to leave me alone for 24 hours, I think I would be, oh, I think I could make it. I just, I just look, I just need a season. If he's going to let me alone for a season, can I just get a season of peace? What do I need to do to get him to leave me alone? I need to go higher. Apparently, going deeper and going farther ain't good enough because he is already deeper and he is already out there. I need to go higher than where he is. So that rascal leave me alone. Somebody shout, I need to go higher so he can leave me alone. I need to have a higher mind. I need to have a higher heart. I need to have a higher attitude. I need to have a higher belief. I need to have a higher faith. I need to have that kind of faith that says it doesn't matter about silver and about gold and about people paying attention and about what they say and about what they do. It doesn't matter about any of that. I'm so high right now that I can feel it. Because he didn't left me alone. That's where this peace came from. That's where this joy came from. That you supposed to have a time in your life where the devil ain't bothering you. I wish I had a witness. He ain't supposed to be bothering you every day. He's supposed to get so tired of you. Or you supposed to get to a place where you are out of reach. Can I just get you to move yourself in a position? That's what Jesus did. When Jesus passed that last temptation, he became out of reach. The devil said it don't make no sense to stay here because I can't reach him no more. I can't get to him no more. I can't touch him no more. I can't bother him no more. I can't upset him no more. I can't depress him no more. I can't make him sad no more. I can't break his heart no more. Some of y'all need to be out of reach. Can I get you to build the kind of praise in the next 60 seconds that renders you out of reach? You can't touch me right here. You can't touch me right here. You can't touch me right here. I don't care how nobody look at me. I don't care what nobody say about me. I don't care what nobody talk about me. I am out of reach. The psalmist, the psalmist tried to tell us that there's a place where you could be out of reach. Psalms 91 said, he that dwelleth in the secret place under the shadow of the almighty God. When you get there, you're in a hiding place. You're in a place where he can't reach you. Have you ever been so engrossed in your worship that you feel untouchable? You feel not worried. You ain't worried about nothing. You ain't sad about nothing. You don't care about nothing except the glory of God. Somebody ought to shout, I'm unreachable. That's why I got to make a commitment to go higher. That's why I got to go ahead and go through the pain. That's why I got to go ahead and go through the temptation. That's why I got to go ahead and go through the heartbreak. That's why I got to go ahead and go through the trouble. That's why I got to go ahead and go through the trial. It's worth it. If the devil going to leave me alone, it's worth it. All I'm trying to do, I'm not trying to be better than you. I'm not trying to act more higher than you. I'm just trying to get to a place where I'm unreachable by him. Somebody shout, I'm unreachable. I dare you touch three people and tell them it's worth it just to be unreachable. Sometimes I'm not answering the phone. It ain't because I'm acting funny. I just need a moment to be unreachable. Sometimes I don't want you to come over to my house. It's not that I don't like you. I just need a moment to be unreachable. 
I'm not saying that you the devil. I'm just telling you that this is a moment that I need to be in a secret place because I need to be unreachable. I don't need to have nothing in my way. I don't need to have nothing touch me. And that means I need to go higher. I can't go higher if I'm concerned about holding on to the last place I left. In order for me to go higher, then I got to leave something behind. That's why the song say, every round go higher and higher since I laid my burden down. If I'm going higher, I can't pull stuff with me. I need to get to a place where I'm unreachable. It's worth it if I'm unreachable. But that ain't even the greatest part. You know what the greatest part of going higher is? Not only does the devil leave me, but when the devil leaves me, the blessings come to me. The Bible said, after he overcame the temptations, after he overcame it, the devil left him and the angels came to him. And apparently the angels didn't come empty handed because it said when they got there, they ministered to him. That means they brought him everything he needed. Everything he was being tempted with, he got anyway by overcoming the temptation. If he had settled with turning the stone to bread, he would have only had one loaf of bread. But when the angels came, because he resisted the temptation, he got all the bread he needed. I'm trying to tell you that you're going to want to go deeper. You're going to want to go further, but you most certainly need to make the commitment to go higher because there's some stuff that the angels need to bring you that you can't get until you go higher, until you make a commitment to get to a place where you're unreachable and you're unworryable and you're undepressable and you're not, you're, you can't be made sad and you can't be broken and you can't be missed with and, and your attitude not controlled by the people around you and you don't, none of that stuff, you got to reach a place where you say, you know what, Lord, I'm bringing you me and I overcame all of that so you can know that you can trust me. Do two things in my life. Take me higher so I can get to a place where the devil can't touch me and then take me high enough so that the angels can get to me. Bring me what I need. There is a place that's high enough that got everything that you need. And guess what? Jesus wasn't in heaven. Heaven came to him because he was in the highest place that he could be. Baby, when you get there, God will bring you everything. It's already on the way. If I can get you to just hold on and keep going higher, how many folk in here ready to go higher? Come on and give God that high praise. Come on and give God that high praise. Come on and give God that high praise. High praise. High at least if you're going to come to church, you might as well at least let church be a place that you're unreachable. If you, since you can't go nowhere else right now, at least let the church serve as the mountaintop. Turn your cell phone off. Don't text nobody. Don't play with the baby. Can you just have one moment where you're unreachable? Uh-uh, baby, don't talk to me today. Uh-uh, baby, I can't hear you right now. I can't hear you. I listen to that later. I talk to you later. I catch you the next time. It can wait till after service. Cause right now I need to be unreachable. Because right now I need the angels to come. I need some ministry. I need to get high enough so that I can get some ministry. I didn't go on through the hurt. I didn't go on through the pain. I didn't made the sacrifice. No, I didn't get it all right, but I didn't get it all wrong either. I'm here where I am, and I'm still going higher. Lord, make me a place.
TLC, God said, let's go higher. TLC, God said, let's go higher. TLC, God said, let's go higher. Are you going to answer the call? Are you going to answer the call? Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. No higher place that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground I'm pressing on <laughs> y'all don't know the upward way new heights I'm gaining every day still pressing on as I onward bound Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I know what we're supposed to do right now. But if you haven't learned this over the last two weeks, when you go deeper, it changes service as usual. When you go further, it changes service as usual. When you go higher, it changes service as usual. You can't, can't do the same thing higher than you did. Because you're always going higher. Oh. Oh. Mm, mm, mm. It's about your commitment. Are you ready to go higher? No, it's not going to be a bed of ease. No, it's not going to be a bed of roses. It's going to be some struggles. It's going to be some challenges. You're going to have to downright fight with the devil. But Holy Spirit said, I wouldn't have brought you to this place if I didn't know you had what it took to go higher in your life. It's all been a setup. When you realize that the thing that was on the plane that you're on is going to be the thing that's going to boost you to higher. Learn how to use the stuff that you go through. Y'all heard Pastor Shirley Caesar, she say you got to pack it under your feet. So that mule say, I'm going to get out of this hole. I'm going to go higher. How you going to do it? He start hitting that wall, making that dirt come down. That dirt come down, he packing on his feet until he realized that there were several things that were happening. One, he was going deeper. Two, he was going farther. And three, he was going higher. All at the same time. God says, that's what I'm calling you for. And I don't want to cheapen this moment. This ain't about a song right now. This is about you making a commitment. You ready? Because see, here's the thing. And then we'll be done. Whether you make the commitment to go higher or not, you're still going to be held accountable. The Bible says that the word of God, when it leaves him, it goes out and it must accomplish what he sent it for it to do. It cannot return to him void. It can't come back to him with the same blessing he put in it, with the same ministry he put in it. That means it's got to go where it's supposed to go and it's got to deliver what it's supposed to deliver. Then it can go back to God. 
So that means in this case, Jesus was compelled to go higher because the angels who were already prepared to bring ministry to him could not go back to the father and say, we couldn't give the ministry to Jesus because he didn't go higher. Let me put it to you. <laughs> Every time you refuse to go higher, you trying to send the angels back to God with the ministry of things that you need. Which means you're trying to prove God to be a liar and to be ineffective. And God is not going to allow that. So you can make a decision that you don't care what I say. You just ain't going through all of that because you ain't going higher. Okay. On the day that you stand before God, When he asks you, you try to send my angels back to me without the ministry that I sent them with to give to you? Are you calling me a liar? Are you saying that I'm not God, that I don't know what I'm doing? Are you saying that you couldn't do something that I said you could? Are you saying that you couldn't overcome something that I said? You could, that I made a way of escape so that you could bear it. And how many folk don't want to tell God, yeah, that's what I meant. So then if I were you, I would hear the words today and not cheapen it in the moment, but understand this is a time of commitment. You're being called higher, TLC. We've been here where we are. We've seen this before several times. God is like, come up, come up higher. And this year we said we were leaning up. We're leaning up. Then it's time for us to make the commitment to go higher so that we can go over so that we can go above, so that we can go beyond. Is there any here today that would make that commitment? This isn't a matter of laying on of hands. Nobody's going to touch you. You ain't got to fall on the floor on it. It's a simple commitment. Sounds something like, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, from the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul, yes, Lord, completely, yes, my soul says yes. Now, you know what happens if you make a move to go higher and then you change your mind in the midst of going higher? You fall. PLC, God said, what you going to do? It ain't Sunday like usual. I know. I don't know. I don't know which plane you are. I don't know if you're in the wilderness right now. I don't know if you're on the church top right now. I don't know if you're on the mountain right now. But wherever you are, God said, are you... This is about your walk. I know I'm taking longer than usual. I don't even care about time. We are outside of time right now. I'm telling you. You know it's bad when God say, I'm sick and tired of the devil messing with you. Like, I want the devil to leave you alone. But it's funny because the father could have made Satan leave Jesus alone. But he never did. You want the father to make the devil leave you alone. But that's not what happened in the scripture. Jesus made the devil leave him alone by going higher. Somebody need to make that commitment today. 
We ain't doing traditional opening doors of the church. None of that. Today's about you. Your commitment to come higher. Ain't nobody gonna touch you or do nothing. You know where you are. You know what you hear. Altar is yours. I, I, nobody, nobody put no oil on your head. Jesus ain't getting no oil. <laughs> he ain't getting nobody ba ba ka ba 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 over him. He ain't get all of that. I'm trying to tell you that it's your decisions. It's your commitment. It's your faith that gets you free. Do you even believe that there's a higher place for you? Or have you given up on life already? Do you even believe that there's a better place for you? Or have you given up on life where you are? Do you feel that you did messed up so bad? God don't want you. You didn't been so low that God can't be calling me higher. He must not know that. I'm telling you that that's a lie from the very pits of hell. It's not true. Every day that God wakes you up, there's an opportunity to go higher. And all it has to do is start right here where Holy Spirit can meet you and begin the process of taking you higher. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, from the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul, yes, Lord, completely, yes. My soul says yes, mm -hmm. yes, Lord. Come up a little higher, y'all. Yes, Lord. From the bottom, from the bottom of my heart to the depths, to the depths of my soul. Tell him yes. Yes, Lord. Completely, completely, yes. My, my soul says yes. Come on, let's say it again. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Somebody say yes, yes Lord. From the bottom, from the bottom of my heart, to, to the depths of my soul, mm, yes, yes, Lord, completely yes, mm. completely yes, my soul. Last one, I promise. Oh, yes, yes Lord. Lord. Just let it go. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. From the bottom of, From the bottom of my heart to, to the, the depths depth of, of my soul. Yes, Lord. Completely, yes. Says the 
those of you that might be watching, maybe you're watching us right now. Wherever you are, you can find a spot in your home. Pull over in the car if you need to, if you need to say yes. Make that commitment to come up higher. God's got some blessing, some ministry that's just for you. It's going to heal you. It's going to restore you. It's going to bring you to the place that you need to be. If you'll go ahead and just say yes. My soul says yes. My, 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 my. My soul, my soul, says yes. my soul says yes. Wanna go deeper, my soul. My soul says yes. My soul says yes. I wanna go farther, yes, Lord. My soul, my soul says yes. I wanna go higher, my soul. it take is a decision to let go a commitment to let go and don't concentrate on the whole mountain right now just concentrate on the next step <laughs> the way you go higher is you got to take one step at a time just make a commitment to take the next step Whatever that next step is for you. But I'm telling you, God's like, I got so much more for you if you just would come higher. If you just would come higher. It don't have anything to do with apostle, with prophet, with evangelist, with pastor, with teacher. This your own. But TLC, I'm telling you, He's called us higher. I'm telling you. Get out of that old way of thinking. Get out of that old attitude. Get out of that old stuff. I'm telling you. He has called us higher. This neighborhood needs us to go higher. This district needs us to go higher. This city needs us to go higher. This state needs us to go higher. There is a higher place. There's more room for your marriage. There's a higher. You going through right now? It's okay. There's a higher. Go through. Go beyond, go over, <laughs> and I promise you, you'll go higher. Angels are waiting to minister to you. The greatest thing that we have that Jesus didn't have, he was on that mountain all by himself. He was in that wilderness all by himself. You got brothers and sisters you in the wilderness with. You got brothers and sisters that you on the top of the church with. You got brothers and sisters that you on the mountain with. If you out there and you already made that commitment to go higher, you need to be praying for somebody else that's up here. Help them. Lord, how can I help them go higher? They may be the key to me going higher. So how can I help them go higher? I don't help them get up. 
whether it's a push or a pull, as long as I'm going higher. Lord, if you would today, even as your word has already put forth to us, we recognize that you're talking to us today. Others may get something from this word, but you're talking to TLC today. Give us the strength to go higher, the vision to go higher, the confidence to go higher, the gifting to go higher, the nourishment to go higher, the faith to go higher the joy to go higher, the peace of mind to go higher. Give us what we need to go higher. Because we can't take living on this plane another day. And give us what we need to help someone else go higher. Because in everyone that we help to go higher, they can help us to go higher. We don't want to just go higher as one person. We want us to go higher as a congregation, as your people, as a group, as a church. We want to go higher. We don't want to go higher than other churches. We don't want to go higher than other people. We just want to go to the height that you have called us to excel to. All that we know is that we haven't reached it yet. Take us to that place, to that height where healings begin to happen, make themselves manifest, to that height to where our shadows can fall on the people that we pray for and they recover and be healed and be delivered and be set free and nobody has to touch them and nobody has to do anything to them. And just the speaking and acceptance of your word takes us to higher places where we grow taller, in you. But it's in a place where we're unreachable so that we can fulfill your calling. And Lord, I know today is not traditional and I thank you for that. <laughs> because you, oh Father, are not traditional. You're graceful. So receive our commitments today, those of us that made them. And those that shied away from making the commitment to go higher today, Lord, I pray that you will give them grace, show them mercy, give them another opportunity to plunge deeper, to go farther, to go higher. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, clap your hands, everyone. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>